at this age of 86, being a physicist and a Hindu, my thoughts have begun to gravitate around the questions, who are we, how did we get there, how this whole universe was formed. I've been investigating the literature on physics of universe, cosmo cosmology, and Hindu Vedas, and the current thinking of science about the universe and the Hindu religion uh, philosophy are not begin beginning to not to be that far apart. Theories of relativity, Stephen Hawkins with his scientific insight and other scientists have established basic principles which govern the start of the universe from a single concentrated point to a Big Bang expanding into a universe for over 14 billion years currently. Also explain the formation of dust, the formation of suns and their satellites and the galaxies as well as our entire world favorite picture of great Einstein of our time. There are three, ba several basic questions still remain to be explained. I'll talk about just three of the more important uh, factors that are being explained by different theories and postulations. Number one, question about the singularity which occurs at time t equals zero. That means if zero is in the denominator of the Einstein equations, that blows up the equation or says that the mass or energy should be infinite. And that seems impractical. Quantum mechanics attempt to explain that singularity. The second issue is that when we observe galaxies, the stars at the edge of the galaxy seem to move faster. Actually, they should be slower because they have to travel in each cycle greater distance than the stars inside the galaxy. So there is an anomaly here why they are speeding up that, that fast. And the explanation for this is that there is a hidden energy that causes that and it's called uh, black energy by the physicist and black mass by the uh, other scientists. Now third issue is the fact that our observed mass of the universe, or the visible mass of the universe, is only one-fourth of the total mass. And so there must be three-quarters of the mass which is vis invisible to us, and we call that as black energy. It's a fabric of energy that spread through the entire universe, and it's passing through us, passing through our bodies already. It's all around us, as shown in by the figure two. So this, this shows a fabric of energy that's spread around, and this is, according to Vedas, is the cosmic energy that guides us in our lives and takes care of when things are destroyed. It absorbs all the, all the particles. Now the black energy, black mass is also consist now consists of subatomic particles. The particles much smaller than the atom. And they are streaming through the entire universe and even through our body as we sit here. Millions of these particles, they are non-reactive, they don't react with anything, and they are not visible. And that's again is the energy, 
that the Vedas say exists around all of us and in the entire universe. So there is a fairly good correlation with the predictions of science and religion, Hindu religion in particular. So now in the uh, Vedas, in the Hindu religion, says that this is the supreme energy which correspond to the black energy uh, indicated by the physicists and scientists. The, under him are Brahma, who is a creator of universe, and the Vedas recognize there's not just one universe, but it's a cyclic system for the entire universe, for everything that starts up, grows up, dies down. So Vishnu is in charge of the entire, which is the cosmic energy in the physics. The Brahmas are in charge of building or creating these uni universes as, uh, as this one postulate said, they are multiple universes come, come in and destroyed. And Shiva is the destroyer or the one that causes the universes to collapse back again. So there is a great correlation between those thoughts, the religious thoughts, and the current scientific thinking. That's it.